Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel, the sedition's top stories. Amended COVID-19 prevention and control protocols take effect March 17, 2021. The current epidemiological curve indicates an encouraging downward turn. And the Simply Health Foundation makes its annual donation to St. Lucia. Following a meeting of the National Emergency Management Advisory Committee, NEMAC, and based on advice from the command center, the government of St. Lucia has amended the COVID-19 prevention and control protocols effective Wednesday, March 17, 2021, until Friday, April 16, 2021. Details on the adjustment in just a moment. First, a look at the data that informed the decision process. At the presentation to NEMAC on Thursday, March 11, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George explained that we are still in a critical position when it comes to COVID-19. Although we have recorded successes and the current epidemiological curve indicates an encouraging downward turn in the rate of transmission. St. Lucia at 12 of March 2021 had recorded 3,748 recoveries of COVID-19 cases. Speaking during an update to the nation, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George disclosed that the island had conducted some 33,348 COVID-19 tests and the number of active cases stood at 218, with 66 being at the Bodily Correctional Facility and 152 from the community. To date, the island has recorded 15 cases of the British variant, the only variant identified in country to date. The chief medical officer said the Ministry of Health has noted a steady rate of decrease in positive COVID-19 cases. Our daily infection rate is 8.2 per 100,000. Our testing positivity within the last seven days is 13%. And within the last seven days, um, the previous seven days, it was 20%. So we continue to see uh, a decrease in, in our positivity. And our rate of transmission is now at 1.6. There are three orange lines, the three taller bars. I just want to indicate that those three bars represent the cases that we are managing at the bodily correctional facility. And these are not community cases. So those three bars, which seemed to fall out of the, the epi curve, I thought needed a level of explanation. These are due to the outbreak at the bodily correctional facility. You note our small wave in March, which was a very little blimp, a little. We had a second wave in October, which went into November. And our third wave that we've managed between January, February, and it is coming um, which is clearing up at this point. We know the, the rate of decrease in cases. And not just in our, our testing, we see in the decrease. On a weekly basis, we note a reduction in persons at the respiratory clinics. We've been noting through our surveillance a reduction in the number of persons with respiratory signs and symptoms. And we've also been seeing reductions in terms of admissions at the respiratory hospital. Majority of the positive COVID-19 cases recorded to date fall between the ages of 25 and 49, followed by ages 50 years and older. Lower age groups account for a smaller percentage with school age that is 0 to 17 years, accounting for only 9.2% of total cases. These individuals have no to mild symptoms and recover well. 53% of the total positive COVID-19 cases are female. The distribution of cases is highest in the Castries district, followed by Grosily, Barbono, and Ancillary Canaries. Dr. Belmar George warned that while majority of the indicators are pointing to the flattening of the curve, St. Lucia is not yet out of the woods. We, we are pleased for the reduction in cases, but it does not indicate that we are yet in a safe place. We still have, um, like I indicated, over 100 active cases 152 active cases within the, the community and we would like to bring this number down um, further before we will feel um, comfortable. So it is important that although we are pleased with the rate of decrease to date, it is not an indication for us to, to let our guard down. 
we still have to ensure we are very vigilant and we maintain all of the measures. It is not an indication for us to, to socialize or to, to relax the measures. We still need to, to monitor very closely. So we maintain the gains that we have seen um, thus far. The chief medical officer is urging all St. Lucians not to let their guard down, but instead to continue to adhere to all stipulated protocols. Among the decisions announced was a curfew adjustment effective March 17 during the hours of 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily. During the Easter weekend, April 2 to the 5th, the curfew will run from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily, and thereafter it will go back to 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Here's Lisa Joseph. All agencies and businesses will continue to implement a blended service operations approach, which includes work from home where possible for employees. Staff and board meetings will be held virtually or online platforms as much as possible. Separate provisions apply for key approved sectors, example, essential services, construction, manufacturing, and call centers. Business operating hours. All business operations and commercial activities must end by 8 p.m. daily, as guided by curfew enforced through the state of emergency. This requires all businesses, including supermarkets and restaurants, to completely shut their doors and business activities by 8 p.m. in order to curb movement past 9 p.m. Restrictions on social gatherings. Social gatherings are restricted to no more than 10 people of immediate family. In public and private settings, individuals are encouraged to limit their contact as much as possible and adhere to all necessary protocols, as well as being mindful of general hygiene procedures. No allowance is given for mass gathering social events of any kind or loud music permits. Religious institutions. All daily or regular church and religious services are permitted in accordance with social distancing protocols. Religious institutions may carry out services according to the square footage of the church. This is guided by each institution's guidelines and protocols approved by the Ministries of Equity and Health. Special religious rites, including baptisms, weddings and funerals, will be limited to a maximum of 50 individuals, inclusive of observers and the service leaders. Funeral and wedding services should be by invitation only. Dates of burial services are not to be formally advertised. Special events. Boat excursions for up to 10 persons. This is only permissible for crude yacht charters and family boaters. Excursion plans must be reported to the lighthouse ahead of the journey. Absolutely no day boat party charters will be allowed. Restriction on alcohol sales. The sale of alcohol is permitted at supermarkets, minimarts, gas stations, restaurants, and bars. Standalone bars to operate during the business hours of 11 a.m. until 8 p.m., allowing only takeaway services. Licensed restaurants are permitted to serve liquor as part of dine-in services only. Strict measures of protocol enforcement and a no-tolerance policy will be in effect. Licensed restaurants and bars to display all necessary licenses and revise capacity as per COVID-19 protocol for their establishment in a conspicuous place. Restrictions on sporting activity. All competitive and high contact sporting events, including indoor and outdoor trainings, local competitions, or social activities are prohibited. Provisions apply for individual or immediate family households to exercise in a safe open air space. Gyms are permitted per square footage and protocols. Special permission granted for training athletes requiring one-on-one -on -one coaching training for non-contact sports, example tennis and swimming. Special permission is also granted for one-on-one -on -one personal training. Schools are to follow strict protocols and regulations issued by the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Education's Continuity Plan for schools in St. Lucia to operate safely on a specified system. Further information on the commencement of in-class learning and dates will be communicated by the Ministry of Education. For more information on St. Lucia's COVID-19 response, please visit covid19response.lc. 
The Ministry of Health and Wellness remains very concerned about the number of COVID-19 related deaths recorded in country. The island has recorded a total of 47 COVID-19 related deaths to date and Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George stated that every death is one too many. Individuals who have passed away range in ages from 21 to 91 years. Of the 47 deaths recorded to date, 81% have occurred in the 50-plus age range, and males account for the majority of deaths. Dr. Belmar George noted the link between the risk and underlying illnesses in terms of poor outcomes for COVID-19. In terms of the risk analysis, and given our morbidity profile for, for diabetes and high blood pressure, I thought it necessary to indicate on the cases that we've seen so far, what the risk analysis by those pre-existing conditions are. You'll note for the diabetes, it's 36.4. For high blood pressure, the, the risk ratio, that is, is 33.9. And for that both diabetes and high blood pressure, is 32.1. So as much as possible, our persons in solution, we know we have a problem with diabetes and high blood pressure. We need to ensure that your diet, the necessary exercise, and that you remain compliant because this is one of the ways that we, and a very important way that we keep healthy, we keep our resistance up as we manage um, COVID-19. The chief medical officer indicated that there is a wide range of underlying illnesses that puts individuals at a higher risk when they contract COVID-19. Therefore, a lot of the Ministry of Health and Wellness strategies are focused on protecting high-risk groups, both in terms of age and pre-existing conditions, to ensure their safety. We have high blood pressure, we have diabetes, we have 21% having both high blood pressure and diabetes, heart disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, obesity, end-stage renal disease, HIV, cerebrovascular accidents, that is persons with strokes, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and asthmatics as well. So for us locally, those are the pre-existing conditions that we note with our um, COVID-related deaths. Now, we, we use the term COVID-related deaths because um, we, our policy of um, testing everyone who passes away, some of those cases were from testing after passing away. Some of those persons um, did have um, serious other underlying conditions, although they may not have developed the, the COVID-19 related pneumonia. But because COVID was positive, we report them for transparency. The vaccination campaign launched in St. Lucia on the 17th of February 2021 was rolled out in a phased approach. Phase 1A and 1B commenced with the highest risk individuals being vaccinated first, including frontline workers and individuals with chronic non-communicable diseases, as well as the elderly. Immunization manager Tekla Jabati says it is important to protect the most vulnerable in the society. And in phase 1B, the focus at that time um, were persons in the elderly population, persons living with comorbid conditions. And I just want to bring back the point that Dr. Belma made just earlier in her presentation. We note the, the comorbid conditions that most of the, our deaths, you know, that would have the, the comorbid conditions that were present. So we had persons living with high blood pressure, diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, heart disease. And it is very important for us that persons living with comorbid conditions, that they are protected because we know that they are at very high risk of developing the very severe form of the disease. And of course, we know that could lead to death. The Ministry of Health and Wellness indicated that the response and turnout has been encouraging, with a total of 14,708 individuals getting vaccinated to date. The immunization manager explained that the ministry will soon be moving into phase two of the campaign and urge everyone to pre-register. We are at a point where there's a need for us to, to reach out, to move a little further 
and to reach out to pers other persons who are at medium risk. And as such, we are going to be moving on to phase two, where we will be reaching out to other persons who, who on a daily basis, by nature of their job, have very high interaction and are also at risk. And I speak of our hotel workers, I speak about the commercial sector, also persons from working in the hotel industry. And um, we will be reaching out to them. So we are encouraging those persons, of course, um, to visit the various um, community wellness, um, community vaccination sites. Um, once they are announced, they can access the vaccine at, at the sites that are nearest to them. That was immunization manager Tekla Shabatiste. St. Lucia received support from a key regional organization to aid in controlling the spread of dengue and other vector-borne diseases. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. The Ministry of Health recently received a donation of equipment and supplies from the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, to assist the country, given the recent outbreak of dengue fever last year. PAHO Country Program Specialist Reynold Hewitt says, his organization remains committed to assisting St. Lucia in strengthening its vector control measures. These equipment and other accessories will be used for entomological surveillance. And on behalf of the PWR, Dr. Itadis Gabri, I hand over these items to the Chief Environmental Health Officer uh, where they will be used for controlling mosquitoes and help to reduce the indices of these mosquitoes in St. Lucia. Chief Environmental Health Officer Parker Ragnanan says the donation of equipment and supplies is extremely needed to decrease the population of the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. These items are indeed much needed as our stock have been significantly depleted. We've also had dated equipment, some that uh, are non-functional at this time. And so we want to ensure the Pan American Health Organization that uh, the, these items will be put into very good use for the benefit of the country as a whole. And so we want to thank you again for them and uh, look forward to continued collaboration with your organization in, uh, improve, in improving and sustaining the health of uh, um, all St. Lucians alike. Environmental Health Officer for Vector Control, Charlotte Charles, expressed gratitude to PAHO for the donation and says it will be used to fight the dengue battle in St. Lucia. It is truly necessary for us to continue our battle against the Aedes aegypti mosquito and the spread of dengue fever across the island. Um, so we'd like to say a big thank you and we'd also like to encourage the fe our fellow St. Lucians to remember that although we haven't been having so many cases of dengue that we should still keep, uh, um, still be aware that dengue is uh, endemic to the island and uh, we may have uh, cases and outbreaks in the future. The donation from PAHO included posters, water boots, chemical gloves, earmuffs, full face respirators, handheld foggers, vehicle mounted fogger and mosquito repellent to name a few. Reporting from the communications unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. International charity the Simply Help Foundation has made its annual donation of supplies for the less fortunate in the St. Lucian society. Jesse Leos reports. Residents of St. Lucia continue to benefit from the bonds of cooperation between their government and the Embassy of the Republic of Taiwan and the Simply Help Foundation. In a recent ceremony, Resident Ambassador to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Xie Yen Chen, handed over 1,000 boxes of goods donated by the foundation. Today, the love from the Taiwanese people and overseas Taiwanese, the kindness, compassion, big or small acts of generosity is a solid testimony to the fact that Taiwan and St. Lucia are not just partners in prosperity, but also partners in adversity. Taiwan will continue to work with St. Lucia to come out better from this 
pandemic. And Minister of Equity, Social Justice, Empowerment, Youth Development, Sports and Local Government, Honorable Leonard Mantout, expressed a sincerest gratitude to the Foundation for their charitable efforts. I want to assure you, Ambassador, that we will spare no effort in ensuring that those who are most in need of what we have here to, do, to distribute will receive them. It will be done on the basis of merit. It will be done on a criteria of need. And so on behalf of those people, the many who will benefit from the gifts that will be distributed, who may not have the opportunity, Ambassador, to meet you and to personally thank you, I take the opportunity on their behalf to express sincere gratitude. The Simply Help Foundation, composed of Taiwanese-American businessmen and women, is a charity that has been donating to those in need annually for seven years. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Twenty twenty is a year that we do not want to revisit. It was tough, frustrating and scary. From family to friends to co-workers and clients, someone we know has been affected one way or another from this pandemic. Let us take responsibility for ourselves and the lives of those around us. On an island of 182,790 people, one life lost rocks the entire nation. So let us overcome this together. Wear a mask. Wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. Stay home and social distance. Share accurate information. Sanitize your hands frequently. Get registered for your COVID-19 vaccine today. Let us bring our society, economy, and health back to normal. Together. 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 Together, Together we can win this war. This message is brought to you by the management and staff of Invest St. Lucia. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tar Janelle, Monsieur Madame, Department de Responsabilité pour Information en Gouvernement Sétlici, GIS, et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle en Creole, Presidente Primus Hutchinson. Après une spéciale conférence en cette administration financière, après ça, fin jeudi le 11 mars, organisation NIMAC, we visit plaisir on ce protocol qui est en place pour renforcer la uh, protection contre la maladie de Corona pour continuer à se manger à cette ci Vous avez aussi Greg Nemak, ça c'est assistant chef de police Milton Daisy, qui a dit soulagement à ce qu'on a qu'à adresser l'opération Westwood aussi. Avant, vous avez dit pour pour gagner manger à un petit parc, et puis aller, mais à présent, vous avez dit mon kai um sa acid restaurant manger mais c'est um nous ni ka le restaurant ka fait mais arrêté um aussi pour um pour faire pour faire rangement pour pour mon observer neve um kofiwa les officiers de marque j'ai d'accord que kofiwa j'allonge sorti c'était pour neve au soir à présent mais la kai ni la kai continue pour ni bid qui bien bandé toujours et que malgré mon cas ça continue marcher et pour exercice ça ne peut fait à bas condition côté y a pas qu'un ni contact et puis y en a l'autre l'école aussi qu'a vieux ouvert mais ces protocoles là qu'a resté même quand avant pour bateau qui calait la mer c'est même aussi malgré selon assistant chef police là la qu'a ni c'était ouais pour suivre y en a ces bagages là nous qu'a enforcé c'est pour les un bateau qui était ici posé annoncé the lay ka kite ya ni pou kouye se um light house pou um informer yo yo ka kite et puis les yo vi an tout pou informer light house tout um tout bateau tout um fisheries tout se sa yo ni limo wa yo ni ready sa ni ready yo yo ka kouye a sou um ready yo yo pou pou fè yo sa pou sa ki ka le ministre ni responsabilité pou adresser relation des affaires femmes ek nan en société PIA, on a Dr. Gail Rigobot, qui a gardé pour les femmes trouver un adhérent plus haut degré à la vie professionnelle et à la vie sociale. En cette liste, 
de réunion discussion et puis nouvelle accueil pour observer la journée internationale des femmes lundi semaine passée. Honorable Dr. Rigobot fait comprendre que malgré les femmes à cette liste déjà accompli autant à la vie professionnelle, il était quand vous dire que l'année plus respect et gratitude pour les femmes qui travaillent en en profession domestique et pour sortir notamment en bas de violence domestique aussi. Expressement à ces affaires, de manière nous avons traité les femmes en Kaila, de manière nous peut-être pas qu'à bail femmes qui capoient qu'à famille en salaire, ça sort bagay ni check l'année, car on y bla nous qu'à parler à ces ça. Là on nous qu'à occuper famille, nettoyer Kaila, garder hors de cette image là, ça c'est un gros travail, mais on a des affaires de développement, nous nous pas jamais Um, Kachile à ce ça et nous ces femmes ça là pas qu'à jouer une qualité um, si pour si pour ni salaire pour qualité de travail ça là alors ça c'est un bagage qui cadre instrument toujours aussi nous qu'à travailler à ce ça nous qu'à créer domestic violence bill ça c'est loi qui qu'à um, parler à ce manière pour traiter um, crime crime qui qu'à fait contre femmes et 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 alors, ma gueule nous check tant nous qu'à travailler sur ça, nous check l'année et comme en ces mois qui passent, nous qu'à travailler, nous qu'à essayer de travailler sur avec toute vitesse. Mais c'est en la peine, nous pouvons finir puis mais moi ni l'espoir qui en ces mois qui qu'à venir nous qu'à ça ouais qui nous qu'à ça passer en en cas parlement en cas concert. Comment c'est jeudi à mon cas est posé tout et puis à tout morceau à ces décisions qui organisation ni marque point pour établir un changement à curfew et protocole pour protéger cette ici contre la mauvaise maladie de Corona. Chef officier médical Dr. Sharon Belmont George explique que la situation est critique toujours, malgré le département de santé, j'ai eu un succès, j'ai eu un succès, à l'animal maladie qui commence à prendre un décédé. Premier ministre de cette ici, Mme Alain Chasney, déclare que malgré les efforts qu'il a fait pour soulager la situation à curfew, pour faciliter le business pays, pour opérer, ça ne veut pas dire que tout le monde en ordre avec le public là, ni pour continuer à prendre toutes les précautions et que servir masse à ce que j'ai sanitaire, chaîne de la distance sociale, la ville en main, a mis l'autre précaution parce que nous avons vu que le corona a transformé si tellement vite. A parmi ces décisions qui ont fait, c'est que le fio a commencé à 9h soir pour 4h les demain au matin, tous les jours, mais durant le finissement de la semaine, la saison PAC là, que le fio a commencé à 7h soir pour 4h les demain matin, tous les jours. Et après ça, et qu'il y a pour 9h au soir, euh, pour 4h au matin. Toute agence avec place business ne peut encourager les travailleurs pour continuer le travail à Kaipito. Ne m'a commandé pour toute discussion faite par Zoom, car c'est Internet, avec l'autre service qui est très nécessaire, con construction, les manufactures, etc., qui a continué. Écoutez, nouvelle accueil pour donner plus d'informations à ce changement là en avant de faire confiance à Kamanagé. Et ça, c'est côté de notre nouvelle amie, c'est madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie l'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore citer le conseil de la ville et vous avez une nouvelle accueil. Je vous remercie tout le monde. Une bonne fin de semaine. Et ça, c'est le mon vieux pour cette chaîne. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.